Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. I am stoked to have Becky Bell on today. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Becky, and she is going to help us understand all things about stress hormones and how they affect appetite and metabolism. So Becky is a registered dietitian and weight loss expert. Becky helps women lose weight, restore their relationship with food, and ditch dieting for good. I think we would all love to ditch dieting. She uses a sustainable approach to weight loss that includes blood, blood sugar balance, mindful eating, and metabolism optimization instead of restrictive dieting. Becky currently lives in Colorado with her husband and three kids and owns a functional nutrition practice called Rooted Nutrition Therapies. Becky, welcome to the show. Thanks, Amy. I'm excited to chat with you today. Yes, yes. Well, you reached out and I have to say, there's a lot of different ways that we could have taken this conversation. You have a breadth of um, experience and knowledge and wisdom um, and, you know, really focusing on food and metabolism and holistic wellness. But I wanted to just kind of zone in on one. And of course, people can learn more about you. And we'll share all of that information a little bit later. But I wanted to zone in on stress hormones and how they impact appetite and metabolism. So um, how does that sound with you? Yeah, it sounds great. This is actually a topic I really love to talk about, because I think for a lot of women, it can be kind of like the missing piece in the health journey, you know, if we don't, if we kind of ignore this one, then um, it can really um, hold us back and really any kind of, uh, you know, health goals that we're looking for. So yeah, I love talking about this topic. Yes. And I think it has such a wide ripple effect as well, because when we're stressed and when we're in those stressful situations, it's not just in the moment, but it does things externally to our decisions. It does things internally. So I'm, I'm excited to, 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 talk about this, but let's start by clarifying what you mean by stress hormones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So technically speaking, when we say stress hormones, there's kind of three main hormones that that includes, which would be cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. And those are all of the hormones that help our bodies adapt to stress. And really like this is um, like the illustration I like to use is like if you're walking in the woods and you face a bear, you know, you get like, like a threat comes up, you know, like God made our bodies to have, you know, to like have a response to that, like to like, you know, or something happens in our bodies and we face that threat and all those hormones, you know, get uh, released and, and produced and they all have a purpose of making our bodies, you know, more alert, kind of getting us into a state where we can, you know, can face that threat, where we can, you know, have everything we could possibly muster up to be able to face that, that bear in the woods. Um, the problem is, is that we aren't facing angry bears, most of us, you know, in our daily lives, but we are living where we're just constantly feeling stress and, you know, maybe not, you know, physical threat, threats to our safety, most of us, but we're facing stressors. And so we're getting a release of those hormones, you know, often throughout the day. The one that I usually, you know, like to talk about the most is cortisol. Cortisol is kind of that main hormone that we tend to get triggered, you know, you know with our stress that we face and that has a big appetite or have a big influence on our appetite and metabolism. I'm wondering if we can dig in a little bit to these. I'm curious what happens, um, in our body, what what is different when we are, say, faced with a bear, or we're, when, when we're in that constant, chronic, low-grade stress? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that might be like fighting traffic or getting frustrated, or maybe it's, you know, a project looming over our head or relationship issues that aren't working well or something that just is constantly threatening us in micro doses rather than, oh my gosh, there's a huge bear. Is there a difference in our body, how our body responds to those? 
Yeah, I, mean, I think there's a difference. I mean, when you get that, if, when you get faced with that, you know, that major threat, you get that huge rush of adrenaline where it's like every other function of your body kind of shuts down, you know, temporarily to really give you that surge, a surge of energy. And most of us aren't facing that, but we get, we are getting that in small doses, a very similar response on a little bit smaller scale. And um, some of the things that are kind of mirror that experience is for one, the cortisol, we get kind of like that, those like little, little surges of cortisol that happen, you know, throughout, um, throughout our day when cortisol should um, go on a curve in our bodies, like it should rise in the morning, you know, kind of peak in the afternoon, start to drop off in the afternoon, there should be like this nice, you know, curve. Well, what happens when we're kind of like, you know, the stress is stimulating that, you know, kind of throughout the day, and we're getting those surges, it messes up, just it gets dysregulated that, you know, like that nice curve we're supposed to get. So most of us aren't getting into that extreme situation of stress, where it's like, you know, huge surge of, of adrenaline and cortisol and everything else shuts down, but we're getting those micro surges. And it kind of, it does mirror that experience on a smaller scale. Another thing that happens in stress is that, um, you know, we talk about like fight or flight, you know, that stress response is fight or flight. Well, the opposite of that is rest and digest. So, and I think that's important because digestion is one of those, those functions of the body that happens in, in a restful state. And when we're, you know, you know, the stress response and those sort of surges of cortisol kind of shut down digestion. It makes our gut motility move a little bit more slowly. Um, because if you're faced with a threat, you don't need to be digesting food, right? That's not priority at the, at the moment. Um, and so our body shuts those things down. But um, it's where a lot of times you'll see um, if you're living chronically stressed, then you'll notice sometimes um, negative effects in your, your digest digestion. You might have more trouble with, you know, bloating or discomfort with food or like bowel movement irregularities, all those fun things that come, you know, with suboptimal digestion. And a lot of times it comes back to like that, that nervous system being constantly shifted into that more fight or flight uh, mode throughout the day. And we're not spending enough time throughout the day in that rest and digest state. Okay. Okay. And that, I, that answers a question that I had, which is what, you know, when we start to have that cortisol kick in, um, you know, what does that do to our appetite and metabolism? And so I guess that I, I feel like you covered that on a high level, but is there anything else that you would want to add to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think a couple other things specifically, I mean, where ties in with digestion is like, that's part of, part of metabolism, right? Metabolism is, I mean, we, we think about metabolism being like burning calories, but really what metabolism is, is you turning turning food into energy, you know, that process of our body being able to use, you know, energy. So digestion is a part of that. But there's some like metabolic changes that happen when we're under stress and cortisol kind of, you know, turns like carbohydrate and fat into quick energy because we, we need that in the moment. But then like, again, like all of this is, all of this is like part of God's design for our body. It's a protection mechanism, right? So if like we're, we're feeling stress, like we're, you know, it's designed to be part of threat. It's also going to kick up appetite because it's the, it's the cortisol is telling your body, like, we need to make sure we have enough energy if this threat persists or the, to, to continue to manage stress. So you'll get, you notice it's a surge in you know, more appetite and you particularly, um, cortisol will make you crave things like sugar and salty foods. Cause those are the, those are the things that we kind of use as, um, fuel, you know, when we need it in the moment. Um, so really, really common if you're chronically stressed that you'll notice that you struggle a lot more with craving those types, those types of foods. Yeah. Are there particular types of food? I mean, you talked about salt and sugar, but, um, are there, I'm just kind of thinking about, okay, is, is there a particular type of food that when I am starting to crave that might be a good check for me to say, okay, where's my stress level? What am I, what's going on? beyond just me really wanting this type of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I see the cravings for salty foods a lot of times more when it's like, like chronic stress because your adrenal glands, which produce cortisol, like need, need salt. And so sometimes that's where that's coming from. But yeah, in the moment, if you're like, okay, like that, that check of like, maybe my stress is out of control, I think is like the cravings for like those, those quick carbohydrates, you know, you're more refined carbohydrate sugar because those are like your, your body knows that those are quick energy. And so when you're like, you know, just when you're on the roller coaster, the up and down, I mean, it, that is very closely tied to blood sugar balance too, which, you know, I mean, it's, you get that, we could get into a whole other conversation about that, but that's really tied to stress too, you know, blood sugar imbalance 
contributes to like uh, this form of stress in the body. Um, but both of those, you know, stress and blood sugar imbalance, you know, can, can fuel that. Like I need, I need those like easy carbs that give me like the bread, the pasta, the chips. So those are things that are going to give my body quick energy. Like your body knows I can get a surge, you know, of energy from that. So I think when you feel, um, like out of control, like you notice, like you're just constantly feeling like you, like I have to have these types of foods, that would be a good, a good indicator. Like, I think I need to maybe assess like, where am I, where am I? stresses. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I want to pull one more thread here. When you talk about blood sugar balancing, talk us through some about how that does impact um, our stress hormones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't try to keep this high level. I'm a science nerd. So I always try to keep it, keep it really simple and not, not get into the weeds, but your blood, you know, blood sugar, we think of blood sugar balance, you know, for, for people with diabetes and it's really, it should, all of us should be paying attention to blood sugar balance. Um, and there's two harm, two main hormones that really regulate your blood sugar balance throughout the day. So you eat, blood sugar goes up a little bit when you eat, your body produces insulin and that helps bring, bring blood sugar back down. Um, when your blood sugar starts to get a little bit too low, well, cortisol is the hormone that helps to bring blood sugar back up to normal. All that is a good normal process. The problem is when we're having like frequent ups and downs and you know we want, we want to have like kind of a, a little wave you know, throughout the day of blood sugar, we don't want big spikes and dips. And when we're having those big spikes and dips, that is stressful on the body because your body is constantly, you know, figuring out how do I keep this in balance? You know, how do I keep, keep blood sugar normal? And every time you have that little bit of a, a dip towards the lower end of normal, then your body is producing cortisol. It is that stress hormone. So you're going to be, and it is, it is a form of, of stress, you know, uh, that you're putting on the body when you're constantly having that up and down. Okay. Got it. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that. Okay. So we're sitting here, we are safe. We have a roof over our head. I don't know about you, but I had a really great breakfast. Like I'm feeling very regulated right now. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little bit harder sometimes though. That's not real life, right? Like, you know, I can leave and I can go hit traffic or, um, you know, I mean, there's just a million different ways. So, I'm wondering what kind of recommendations you might have to just kind of keep those stress hormones in check, um, whether it's something that we can do or something that we can prevent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like to think of stress as, as um, like a bucket, you know, we have, we all have a, like a stress bucket and we all have rocks in that, in that bucket, right. That are, are stressors. And like, we, we can't live a stress-free life. We don't even want to, like there's some, some amount of stress in our bodies actually is actually good. It's good for like our mental health or physical health have some amount of stress. Um, and the problem is, is when that bucket starts to overflow, like there's too many rocks in the bucket, it's overflowing. And so when your bucket is overflowing, there's, we, there's two things we can do. We can either remove rocks from the bucket, which means that's when we need to set some boundaries for ourselves. Like maybe we need to take a pause. We need to let go of some commitments. We need to, you know, take, take some time for ourselves to make some more space. But sometimes we need to then maybe just, you know, create a bigger bucket because sometimes we have stressors in our lives that there, there's nothing we can do about, like we're, we're taking care of sick parents or we're, we're, we're in the throes of parenting, you know, where, and there's, yeah. there's things, you know, our jobs, like sometimes we, there's nothing we can do to remove those stressors. So, but what we can do is focus on increasing the size of our bucket, which means increasing our body's stress resilience and our ability to adapt to stress. And honestly, that, you know, it's some, some of that we can do with, you know, with nutrition certainly plays a role in that. But some of that is just like incorporating habits that are helping our body to manage the stress load that is on and on us. And I think a great place for everyone to start is uh, is being intentional about like in your daily rhythms, like, are you doing something in your daily rhythms that is releasing some stress, you know, like, and that can be, it can be as simple as, you know, like 10 minutes of, of journaling, you know, just like, like getting some things out. It can be like some 10 minutes of like silent meditative prayer. It could be uh, even meditation. There's some really beautiful, like even um, like faith-based meditation apps that are just guided and like allow you to like, take you through some like releasing and some things really helpful. Um, deep breathing, really, really powerful practice. Um, and there's, there's a lot of science behind that, you know, like that, that, you know, deep breathing helps us to relax our nervous system, like release some of that pent up stress we're holding in our body. And 
a habit of doing that, it helps that it helps your stress resilience, you know, it increases the size of that bucket, including um, some of those habits. Um, walking is another favorite one. I mean, walking, there's, you know, it's been shown to lower cortisol levels. It, um, it can be, you know, also just being out in nature, of course, Duke is also lots of signs about nature and, you know, our, our body stress response. So um, I think starting with um, uh, making sure like you're making space and like, if you're thinking about like your health habits, like it's more than just food and exercise, right? Like stress management, intentional stress management and taking time um, to create a rhythm for stress relief, I think is a, is a, a really important place to start. <laughs> uh, yeah, I completely agree. And it's funny, I can only speak for myself, but it's taken me a long time to, for lack of a better word, admit that all of these seemingly really small things actually do help. Like they seem too simple because they are simple. And a lot of times they're easy. You just have to be intentional about it. And they really do make a huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a super high achiever. And I'm like, I've always have been someone who's like, I think I manage stress really well because I don't like feel stress. I don't like feel overwhelmed. Um, but you don't have to feel overwhelmed to be stressed. Like we're carrying that stress in our bodies, whether or not we feel like we're at the breaking point. Um, and I think for, for someone like, you know, if you, if you are with someone more like me, like that high achiever, it's like all the more reason why you need to be intentional about releasing stress, because just because you're carrying it well, doesn't mean that it's not having negative effects on your, on your body. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. I actually don't carry stress well, <laughs> good or bad. I just get like, even when I remember I almost didn't get a promotion at uh, my job before I had kids because when I get going, like I get amped up and that actually was perceived as, oh, she's, she's stressed out. She can't handle this. Whereas really for me, it was more like I was excited and I was amped up, but it was, it, it all came across the same way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I do not, I do not carry my stress very well. And actually speaking of that, so that reminds me of a story that I experienced just a couple weeks ago. So I am in a season, um, of doing college visits with my younger son and we were off at a, um, at a university somewhere I've never been. And, it, it was, we were there for like the college tour and it's, it's wet. Like everybody would say, well, how is this tour? I'm like, it was so wet. It was raining. And my umbrella, I had like one of those tiny umbrellas. Like I didn't even have a big one because we had flown there and I had to pack it and the umbrella was really cheap. And so it was like dripping through. And so I had my rain coat on and then I had the rain hood over, but the hood, like I couldn't see and my, and the rain is coming down and I've got the, my phone out and, and it's getting wet and I'm lost and I can't figure out where I'm going. And I'm like, I mean, I was so stressed and like all of the preparation of resiliency and breathing and prayer time and everything else like goes out the window, at least for me in moments like that. And so I'm wondering if you have some suggestions when, even if we have prepared ourselves and done as much as we can, but when we're in those moments, I mean, I finally had to say to my son, I was like, I just need a minute. I just need a minute. And then we ended up like not going to one part of the thing because we, we went to the visitor center. I was like, I just have to reset. Like we were both like frazzled. So anyway, when we find ourselves in those situations, despite our best efforts, what kind of recommendations do you have? Because even though, you know, that we're talking about stress, this really does affect us metabolically it affects our rest and digest and and you know it, it's all intertwined i mean that's just how god made our bodies so what what do you recommend then um i actually think that for me like breathing is one of my favorite tools to use in those moments because it doesn't have to be like you know a 30 minute like de-stress session it's like can literally be in the moment and and it's the power of breathing is that it shifts your nervous system into that parasympathetic more restful nervous system and but, but like you alluded to, so I'm just walking away. Like I'm one of those people too. Like sometimes like, I just, I'm like, I need a moment. Like I, and I'm an introvert, you know, I'm hardcore. So like getting by myself and just, you know, like doing some of like, some like, you know, um, kind of like 
re redirecting my thoughts, you know, and kind of telling myself, this is not true. If you're on this negative spiral of thoughts, because sometimes our, our thoughts are directing that stress response, right? So like, you know, kind of calling my thoughts out a little bit and like speaking a little bit of truth to myself and say like, okay, like I don't have to keep like spiraling down this path and taking a few like really deep belly breaths. Like sometimes when I feel that like tension, like rising up in my body, like that for me, that's one of the most powerful things in the moment to be able to shift out of that is breathing. If, if I have the space, I'll go like, you know, sit and listen to some worship music or something to <laughs> that. Super also helpful, but I'd say breathing is probably like my number one go-to, like, okay, let's take a pause. I do that with my kids too. When they start getting like worked up and that's like, okay, we're not having a productive conversation and you're angry, like breathe with me. And it's, it can calm that nervous system down <laughs> in the moment. That is great training. I don't know how old your kids are, but I wish I would have understood the power of, of the breath when I was raising little ones and, you know, they're fighting back. I mean, now mine are almost 18 and 19. So, uh, you know, they can still learn, but it's just a little different. <laughs> I don't know okay. what they're doing with me, but, but I try. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know what? I think that that is still modeling the kind of behavior that you want them to have, even if they're not necessarily joining in at the moment. Um, okay, so one of the other things that you have the designation of is a mental health integrative medicine provider, which by the way, is a real mouthful to say, but I love, <laughs> but I, I think it's a, oh man, we so need this. I'm wondering if in this spirit of this conversation, if you can offer us some um, foods or, you know, other things to help us stabilize our stress and really promote a healthy brain. Because again, as we know, it's all related. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to start, start that answer with going back to the topic of blood sugar balance, because one of the best things you can do for mental health or your brain health is really keeping blood sugar stable. And, and like, you know, first step in that is just focusing your meals, making sure you're getting protein, adequate protein, healthy fat, fiber, all those are really important for blood sugar balance. Um, but there are some specific nutrients that are really helpful, like that your body needs more of when you're under stress and also are really you know, supportive for the brain. Um, one of my favorite nutrients is magnesium. You know, most of us don't get enough magnesium. It's like a super mineral as far as helping, you know, your body to, you know, deal with stress. You, you definitely go through more and more magnesium when you're stressed. Helps really a lot with anxiety, muscle relaxation, digestion, all those things. You can certainly take supplemental magnesium. It's my favorite foods are things like nuts and seeds, really important, you know, good healthy fats to have in the diet. Um, legumes, like your beans, really good foods that are high in magnesium, avocado. So, you know, including some more of those, of those foods are going to give you um, magnesium. Um, vitamin C is really helpful for your stress response too. So your adrenal glands, which, you know, uh, reg, you know, produce cortisol and regulate cortisol need vitamin C. And again, you'll go through anytime you're, you're stressed, you're going through a, more of any of those nutrients. So Prior to prioritizing vitamin C rich foods, especially first thing in the morning can really help support your adrenal glands uh, when you're more stressed. So things like citrus fruits, kiwi, bell peppers, those are really good foods to include. Um, and then, and then um, B vitamins too. B, I actually think when, when you're under in a more stressful period of time, I think that taking like a B complex uh, supplement is a good idea because you're going through those B vitamins much more rapidly uh, when you're under stress. Um, and then the last one I would mention is uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids. I mean, very, very important for your brain, especially. Um, so including foods in your diet on a regular basis, things like fish, uh, like flaxseed, chia seed, those are really good sources of omega-3s. Very, very helpful for your brain, as well as decreasing inflammation and salt, you know, all connected to our stress response. Awesome. Um, for people who are newer to me, um, they and want to learn more about magnesium. I had a very interesting conversation in season 15 with Natalie Gerardo about all the different kinds of magnesium. I learned a lot. I implemented a lot and she has a great lotion, a topical lotion um, too. I just have to, <laughs> I have to add that because it was a, it was a fascinating conversation about magnesium too. So I'll put that in the show notes. If you guys want to go check that out. Um, well, thank you for that. I think it's always really helpful to kind of 
you know, have some specific things that we can add into and be intentional about when we are in those periods of time, because if nothing else for me, it feels, um, it just feels like I have a little bit more control and and I can drive the boat uh, more than it just running and and I'm following it, (laughs) which is sometimes how life feels anyway. Like we're on a speedboat and it's like, I don't know where it's going. (laughs) So thank you for that. Um, okay. So I know that you have a free guide called five health habits that are keeping you from losing weight. And, uh, this is something that I know you wanted to make available to my community. And can you tell us some about that guide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically this guide goes through five, um, habits that a lot of us have been told are healthy or that are maybe are, are helpful, but they're actually um, habits that are probably having a negative effect on our metabolism and, you know, keeping us stuck either, either, uh, mentally or physically, uh, you know, if you're on a weight loss journey. So, um, and then of course I go through, what do I recommend instead, (laughs) instead of, instead of these mistakes? Okay. Awesome. Well, I love the concept of, um, calling out things that we often think and myths. Um, I actually have a book that takes 22, health and fitness, um, quote unquote rules and breaks them with exercise science and nutrition science, because there's so much misinformation out there and there's so much misunderstanding and thing, the science is changing too. So I love that you, um, have these five habits and I think that that'll be really eye opening. Uh, so I reckon, I definitely go grab those everyone. Um, okay. Now I have some questions I ask all my guests, uh, One of them is I love learning about people's tattoos because I have found that when people choose to put something on their body for the rest of their life, often they have a meaning behind it. I was wondering if you have a tattoo, if you would mind sharing what that is and uh, the meaning behind it. If you don't have one, but you had to get one, what would it be and where would it go? Yeah. So I do not have a tattoo, but I have well, I was wanted one someday, someday I will we'll get one. And I, one of the ones that I've thought about getting is the word savor. And the reason for that is because nutrition is a, is a passion of my life. Wellness is one of my, you know, I feel like that's my calling. It's my passion. Um, but I also, you know, really uh, believe in number one, that food should be savored. There should be joy in eating, but also like the word savor is a reminder to me, like to slow down and enjoy life. You know, as, as I said, I'm a high achiever and, and that is, um, you know, like my go-to to live life very like driven, goal oriented. And like that word savor is meaningful to me to like, to slow down and to enjoy, be present. Like that's the constant reminder that I need in my life. If I'm going to put a tattoo in my body, it's going to be something that's something I need as a reminder, something that I want to live by and something that I, I need in front of my face. You know? Yes. That's great. Where would you put it? Probably on my wrist. Cause again, I, I want to see it all the time. If I, if I get one, yes. I had a client once who chose to put tattoos places where she couldn't see them. She wanted to put them on. She's like, I don't want to see them, which I thought I was like, okay, that's fine. So everybody has like kind of a, their own little preferred place. So thanks for that. What about a meaningful Bible verse? Uh, I know you and your husband are both in ministry. And so do you have a meaningful Bible verse you'd like to share? Yeah, I thought I'd just share my, my all time favorite verse, which I actually feel like was kind of fitting to our conversation about stress. My favorite verse is Isaiah 26, three. It says, you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. And for sure, for staying steadfast and to like what I know to be true, another important tool we need to lean into when life gets crazy, stressful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, If people are wanting to learn a little bit more about you and your your company, where would you like to point them? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty active on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is at rooted.dietitian. Um, and then uh, my website is rootednutritiontherapies.com. It's where you can learn, you know, all about my programs, offers, and, you know, I have lots of freebies on the website too. Fantastic. And we'll definitely put that in the show notes for people to check out. Okay. And then I would love for you to leave our, um, 
leave me and everyone listening with the one simple thing that you would like us to remember. It can be big, it can be small, but just uh, one thing to implement into uh, where our, our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I think more than anything, what I you know want to leave people with is just the idea that health is about so much more than the food that we eat. You know, it's about how you talk to yourself. It's about the rhythms of self-care that you develop. And, and ultimately living in a way that really nourishes your mind, body, and spirit. Amen. Okay.